the worst time of the year for returns and what to do about it. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about returns. For those who are new and just starting off on reselling, Christmas fourth quarter is the biggest worst time of the year ever for returns. You're going to have far more outweighing probably the rest of the year in some cases, depending on what you sell just in the fourth quarter. And that's not just an eBay thing or anything like that. That's industrial standard. It's always going to happen in fourth quarter. More stuff is bought, more stuff is sold, hence more stuff is returned. Now with what's going on now, there's a lot of new people buying on the platform who have never bought from online before because a lot of the brick and mortars are closed, so they're forced into a lot of these platforms. Never bought, don't know the policies, don't know the practices. So in some cases, you may get more just because of that factor. A lot of people this time of year get frustrated with the amount of returns. Dealing with them is also a hassle these days, it seems, for most people as well. It just depends on how you handle it. Regardless of the customer and what's going on, you pretty much have to take something back. I don't care if you put a policy that says no returns whatsoever on eBay. If they fill it in as not as described, it doesn't matter at all what you typed in they can get it returned and you have to do something for them. You will have to refund it if there's nothing wrong with it and they returned it as it was. Your policy means nothing in those cases. There will always be a group of people as well that will file a fraudulent item that is described just to get their money back on the item. It's gonna happen again. There's always a certain percentage of crowd. With all brick and mortar in anywhere pretty much in corporate America, there is a line on a P&L for losses. There's a line for theft, there's a line for depreciation, there's a line for pretty much any way that someone could swindle money. Sometimes losses are accrued over, written off at the end of the year as well. But every company on the globe pretty much has a loss percentage figured in. Grocery store may have a 2 or 3% loss, maybe even higher in some categories like produce. It's something you're going to have to deal with. Now, how much you have to deal with depends on what you sell. There are some categories that are almost always higher returned categories, such as clothing, shoes, for an example, shirts, dresses, and things like that. If they don't fit properly, much of the time they could be returned. In some cases, I've heard return rates in clothing as high as 30%. A lot of people talk about buyers renting the clothing. They'll wear it and then return it in a certain length of time. Yeah, that could be the case for a certain percentage of them. But we order clothing offline including on Amazon, and some of the times the sizing charts, the foreign production of some of the clothing is totally off on the way they fit, the way they mark. We even read the comments to see if it's larger than it says or smaller than it says, but inevitably a certain percentage of those, 10, 15%, just don't match the description. The cloth is wrong, fabric content is wrong, or something along that line. So the percentage on clothing is usually pretty high. I can't say that the majority of those are people renting them because I really think it's a minority. I've sold clothing very extensively a few years back. So I pretty much had issues as well. And the majority of them weren't something like that. Some of the returns could be you missed a stitch, you missed something, something's out of whack in it. Uh, there's so many other reasons why. Now, when somebody opens up a return like that, depending on your return policy, they can ding you. They can leave you negative feedback for that item, even if technically there's nothing wrong with it, if they file a not as described return for that. There's one quick way to alleviate that, and I know a lot of people grumble when I say this, but a 30-day free return will save you from all of that. It's it's a no-brainer in my book. We've done it for, geez, years, like three or four years. Since that option was available, we've used it. My returns have never gone up at all in any way, shape, or form. Just It hasn't happened. It hasn't materialized with, like everybody else says it will. We sell a lot of stuff. I've got a lot of stuff online, and I don't have this massive returns. The last three returns that somebody opened a return case on was from the same buyer. It was three items. They opened it up as they just didn't like 
like it. They changed their mind. I don't technically have to do something with that, but I always accept it, regardless of what the rules are or anything else, whether I have to or not. I always accept the returns. When they get back to me, if there's something wrong with them, then I do something. I will challenge the case. I will call eBay or whatever it takes to fix the situation. But the last three that I had, they never returned them. They never sent them back. So I don't have to do anything with it. The case is closed. They can't return them later or anything else like that. So again, that's typical for us, but it does depend on what you sell. There are some areas that are high fraud. Now we know somebody locally here who has an electronic store, which I do some business with, used to sell on eBay, but he got taken, ripped off by a buyer on thousands of dollars worth of electronics vintage receivers and things like that. eBay sided with the guy, believe it or not. He didn't do any videos. He didn't do anything else. He had insurance and the whole works. But either way you go, he got screwed and he stopped doing eBay over that issue. I'm not saying stuff doesn't happen at all, but it's slim depending on the category. And vintage and collectibles, there's not much that can go wrong with it. They send it back or they destroy it or something. It's not a huge ordeal in certain categories. But again, with clothing, you're going to have to deal with it. Doing a 30-day free return, which is what I do, they can't ding me. If they open up a return, they cannot leave negative feedback for me, period. It's done. They can't do it. As long as I follow through, they send the item back the way it was, I can refund them their money. You don't have to refund them either the original shipping charge. You just have to pay for the return shipping. So you're only losing the shipping once. It's not a double shipping. You can add in the original if you wish, but you do not have to. If they, let's say, did something or dinged it or damaged it a little bit from what you sent it to them, you don't have to refund them the complete amount of money. You can deduct from that return for it. It will close the case. If they don't like it, they have to open up a separate case with eBay, not through you. It's a totally different aspect of the case. You are free and clear once you've given them a refund on eBay. There is a limit. You have to give them, I think it's at least 50% of it, regardless of the issue. Now, if they've done something totally illegitimate, like sent a brick back instead of a stereo component, we actually got a brick sent to us instead of a PS3 one year. It was for our kids, so it was very upsetting for Christmas that we got a brick shipped. And of course, we opened it ahead of time. We had time to fix it but it's the principle i did get my money back person was ripping off a whole bunch of other people they had good feedback they'd been on for years so feedback in some cases doesn't mean anything especially right now this day and age because the pandemic's going on less people have money and there's a bigger need for people to get money to help feed their kids or whatever the case may be so this year could be one of the worst ones for returns and ripoffs the worst time of the year in general for scams, rip-offs, and things like that is always the fourth quarter. Now, even locally with brick and mortar, I've got friends in law enforcement. The worst time of the year they ever have to deal with is usually fourth quarter. People stealing, shoplifting, things like that. It goes way, way up. They'll steal it. They'll turn around and resell it online for money, whatever they're doing. It's just the point that this is the worst time for that. So you got to be ready for it. you got to be diligent. Every little defect, every little detail that's wrong with an item, you've got to make sure that it's in that listing. Don't miss anything. Pay attention to every little aspect. What you basically want to do is remove any option for them to say that something was wrong with the item if they're trying to scam you in the first place. The best possible image, describe every little detail. It will lessen your amount of returns. Now with clothing, when we were doing clothing heavily, you can't just go by the label on a shirt or anything like that. You've got to put measurements in most of the better pieces of clothing. Otherwise, there could be issues on returns. And if you're doing that, it's going to cost you every time that comes back. So I always made sure to put measurements on all of it. Now, I never did like clothing to begin with. I didn't like the, the return aspect. I didn't like having to take the extra time to write the dimensions, the size, all that sort of things. You have to take way more photos. You've got to be much more careful to make sure you're not missing any defects or tiny little holes or spots or anything else like that. I'm picky with my clothing. I can understand people being picky with clothing or issues with them, even used or not. So you've got to be diligent. This time is the scammer's time frame. Always cover yourself no matter what's going on. If somebody says something's damaged on it and it's an issue where it's costly to send it back and you're doing the free shipping, have them send some pictures so you can make sure there is damage to the item. I hear a lot of people saying that the minute they get a return, they'll just refund them the money and be done with it. I'll never do that. I don't mind accepting the return, but I want to know what they're talking about. 
Again, sometimes I'll just let them keep the item if it actually looks destroyed or damaged. It does happen. Even if you pack the best way possible, it can still be damaged with the post office or you know UPS or whoever you happen to be using. Returns in general, though, for those of you who are new or even those who have been on for a long time, can be stressing. Take them as a business thing. Even if somebody's trying to rip you off, they're not really trying to rip you off personally. They see you as just eBay. I got this off eBay. I got that off eBay. They're just ripping off a company in their mind. They don't know how it works. Maybe they assume eBay is going to reimburse you. They don't even care. But don't take them personally. Don't get all upset. I know it's money. I know you can lose some, but it's not going to help the situation. Be calm, collective, get all the information you have, contact eBay immediately, call eBay if you've got access to the service. Otherwise, eBay for Business on Facebook is fairly good and does respond within, say, a day or less. I think 10 hours or so was the last time I just sent an email. Usually I call. It's usually the quickest way, but lately the phone calls have been taking longer and longer. I'm assuming more and more people are calling with issues going on. Another thing is don't let the returns break you down. Don't let it get to you. Move on. It's not the end of the world if you get a return. As long as the isn't damaged you can resell it with the original listing so you don't have to do anything else and put it back up the vast majority of the time if i've sold it once and had a return in the past i was able to sell it again and in some cases the offers were higher and i sold it for more money so i don't worry this month you may get a couple returns and next month you may not have any as well so don't take it personally just move on with your business the most important part is making money not worrying about one person trying to scam you or something report it fill out the information as i said do everything you can in your power to cover yourself you know ebay is there they do help with the majority of issues that i have had believe it or not but they have helped with the majority of them most of the cases that i've had to open up i was in the right and was able to win again because the person was scamming they did something stupid they didn't follow the rules now i was looking over another person's account the other day and one of the feedbacks they had a negative one was making some comments in there that are against the rules they didn't know that they just lived with the feedback in there told them what to do and sure enough that feedback was removed because it violated the rules on ebay knowing the rules can save you all over the place and with returns as i said even if you state no returns accepted you have to take item not as described not only that they can leave you negative feedback in those situations regardless even if your policy says no returns, they can ding you. They can leave you negative feedback no matter what. But if you do 30-day free returns, they cannot ding you for any return that is opened. They don't send the item back, they can't ding you. Something wrong with the item, they can't ding you over that as long as you take it back. That is probably the best saving factor, in my opinion, to save your feedback from those sorts of issues. We have that policy on every single one of our listings. They can send it back up to 30 days and we will pay for the return. And as I said, you don't have to refund them when it comes back for the original shipping if you don't want to. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Dagobah sure is strange. Now, R2-D2, be careful. Uh -oh. Action figures each sold separately, like Luke Skywalker and new R2-D2 with sensor scope. R2, come out of there right now. Help me locate Yoda with your sensor scope. You found someone, I'd say. Your search is over, Luke. Ben Kenobi and Yoda. Learns quickly, the Shrim Jedi. Yoda, new R2-D2, and other action figures each sold separately from Kenner's Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back collection.